Um, I just want you all to know, and I know you know this, but I think it's really important for anyone watching that this um, budget um, begins in August, September, when all of the supervisors and principals and school managers and teachers and support staff are all giving their feedback on what they need. Um, and they presented to you in October um, all the needs. And then what we do is we massage the needs. What can we possibly meet some of those needs this year? What can we do with grants? We kind of massage it down, and this is the recommended budget. But it is a process um, in, in creating this budget. And the other thing that I want everyone to remember is we do take the priorities from the budget survey serious. So if you all remember the top priorities from the budget survey were continue with competitive pay. Um, so there you'll see a placeholder in here for staff. Another one was to continue keeping the class sizes, maintaining smaller class sizes. So you'll see additional staff in here and also even though our enrollment down is to keep the existing staff that we have this year. Um, another one is to address social emotional learning. You will not see a large increase in this area and the main reason you won't is because we got the Maryland AWARE grant. So we're able to do a lot of things with that. Um, and we also have grants for social workers and we also partner with our community mental health. But in future budgets, you will see the social emotional piece. Um, and then universal pre-K. And we are very um, fortunate to have universal pre-K, but we want to keep universal pre-K. So you will see some um, areas in here where those are addressed, and I think it's important for you to note that. So we're going to start with where are we in the budget timeline. I know you've seen this. You're tired of seeing this, but it's important to know where we are. Um, the next step after listening to the budget presentation tonight is for you as a board to hear um, from folks in the community. So this budget will be posted on the website for people to take a look at. They can come to the public hearing at 5.30 on the 19th. We will listen to whoever would like to speak or send in comments about the budget. Um, and then from six to seven, you will actually have time as a board to have a work session on the budget. And it moves to second reader during the board reading. Then in February, um, you will approve a budget to move to the County Council, and you will do a budget presentation to the County Council in March. The County Council will introduce their budget in May, and then they will have a public hearing on their budget and then finalize the budget in June. So that's kind of where we are. Um, again, it's a year-long process. Here's our demographics. You've seen this slide before, too. Just to note, we're 30 more students than we were last year, but we're 153 students less than FY21. So I think that's important to note. Um, we did uh, go back about a half a percent in African American. We um, increased in Hispanic Latino population by 2%, and we went down 1% in Caucasian. Um, so there has been a change there. We have increased 1% in special education and we've increased 1% um, uh, in English language learners. Um, our farms free and reduced meal population is down, and I think it's down because everyone's getting free and free breakfast and lunch, so we just didn't get as many forms in. Um, but to me, I think if we really got everyone's forms in, I think it would be higher than that, but I just wanted to share that with you because that's how we're funded. In this budget, there's a million dollars in the budget for a salary placeholder for all staff. That's a 2.75% uh, for certified and 3.25% for support. Um, we really need to stay competitive on the shore. As you all know right now, we are 15 positions short. This morning, uh, this, uh, this evening, if you pass the personnel report, we'll only be 12 short, so that's a good news. Um, this budget also includes a 5% health insurance and fixed charge increase um, in the budget um, for those staff members. So that's just for you to note. And um, additional staffing requests throughout the budget, and then I'm going to go by category in a minute, but this is just an overall. Is additional instructional staff is a, um, a part-time teacher for the CNA instructor program. And that's for this year's program. Next year, those students will go out and do uh, placements, and you need to have somebody as, uh, like a supervising nurse to supervise them in their placements to get their hours. 
So that's a part-time person. Um, actually, uh, we know a couple people that might be interested in that, so that's actually a good thing. Um, an English language learner teacher because of the increase in services for special education teachers. And what I can tell you about that is, um, one is we've doubled our number in our P3, our three-year-olds. Um, so we need another P3. We also have increased our self-contained students. In other words, our students that have the most hours of service has increased. Um, so we will need another self-contained teacher there. We also know that um, we need uh, another special ed teacher. We, because of COVID, we have a lot of kids that are getting tested right now. And uh, we're going to need some staff to help with um, providing those services. And if you um, think about it, when, you, when you're only going to school a couple days a week or you're shutting down for any amount of time, we're also trying to get in a lot more of those services that students need. And that includes English language learners. They don't always hear the English language when they're home as much as when they're in school. So we have seen them go back. We did get a new student this year who needs a sign language interpreter. And also you'll see a change in mid-level administration. I'm recommending that the three elementary administrative interns go back to assistant principal positions in this budget. Question? Yes. Um, for the sign language, are we also offering sign language in schools to students? We offer it as a club, but we do not have a course, no. Um, so I'm going to go by category, and then what I'm going to do is show you a summary of each category, even though you have the whole book. And then after each category, I'm going to share with you what are the major changes in that category. Um, so administration, I think it's important to understand that what is administration? What's in this budget is everything in the superintendent's office, the human resources office, the um, finance and accounting department, the communication department um, are all in um, this line item, plus board, any board out allowances or professional development and background checks and processing and legal fees. So that's administration, just so that you kind of wrap your head around that piece. Now, um, one of the changes, um, really there's very little change in administration. Um, there's an increase in some contracted legal services um, for the board and increase in some of the salaries in TCEC employees. You will see actual decrease in salary and wages because some people that have come up here to work, make less than the people that they replace. So for an example, if three or four people up here retired last year, they're replaced by younger people that might make less money, even though there's a salary increase in here for the TCES EC employees. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's administration. The next category is called mid-level administration. And in this category, um, this includes all of your school-based administrators and secretarial staff and office supplies in schools. It also includes curriculum specialists. And um, where you'll see an increase here is we did move three teachers from administrative interns into mid-level to be assistant principals. So when I get to this page and it shows you where the increase is, it's a placeholder for salaries. And when you look in your budget, as, as I told you earlier, we have over 400 teachers. So there's 400 teachers, but there's also about 150 IAs. So these are the salary increases for those folks, but it's also moving those um, three teachers from instructional salaries into mid-level administration. The next category is instructional salaries. And it's not quite the increase that you might expect for a couple reasons. One is we did move three teachers out um, to be for an assistant principal. But the other is we had a lot of people leave last year um, that at the higher rate. Again, we had a lot of retirees last year. And we, they were replaced with newer teachers. So you're going to see a little less of an increase. But what I can tell you is there is a placeholder for the salaries. There's an additional 0.5 CNA instructor, an additional English language learner teacher, 
and moving those administrative interns. So that's the difference in this category. Um, and just on a side note, we went from 489 EL students to 567 this year. And a lot of our EL students that are coming to us are level one, which means know very little English. Where so, are they primarily going? Which schools? All over. Uh, Easton. Pr primarily Easton, but really in all of our schools, but primarily Easton. Uh, materials of instruction is a decrease. Um, and a lot of that has to do with, to be honest with you, we have done so many curriculum updates over the years. I know you've been a part of this for so many years. We don't have a lot of curriculum updates this year. We're looking at high school and middle school um, history. Um, but we did get a lot of the materials of instruction from grants that we needed. And we had less kids in last year. So we have some leftover materials. But everything the schools ask for is in this budget, um, just so that you know. We were able to just streamline some of the curriculum requests because we didn't, we're not buying a big new program um, this year like we have. You remember the past, we've had a whole ELA, our English language arts, we've had a whole math, we had STEM scopes for science. We don't have that this year. So I do think um, we have less students too, so um, we've been able to cover some things by grants. Yeah, she's cute too, look at that. Okay, other instructional costs. I think it's important for you to know as a board and to be mindful of what's in this category. So when you think of other instructional costs, if you look right at contracted services, it's a little deceiving, but that contracted service number is we're putting back in our environmental field trips for next year. Remember we took all of that out because of COVID? That's putting it back in. Um, and the other thing that we did was um, it also includes software licenses, um, so that can get into other charges, and it includes dual enrollment. Remember, we have that um, unfunded mandate where we pay for dual enrollment, AP training, college board testing, athletic subsidies. So any in, um, coaching comes out of, the, out of this line item as well um, as subsidies. And the bigger ticket item under land, building, and equipment is um, software. I mean, um, excuse me, not that's incorrect. Hardware and infrastructure for technology. So what that includes is are all of these items. But at the same time, I wanted to share with you, and I hope the slide works. Yes, it did. Thank you. Um, this is Mr. Wilson has put this in here to show that these infrastructure high priority areas, we were able to get some of these things from grants, but the projects at the bottom, like the wireless access points and data switches, those are, um, those are in our local budget. So that's the projects that he's actually bidding out right now, so that you as a board in January will take a look at those bids and then um, approve them pending funding. Pending, they stay in the budget. Um, but I wanted to show you where that came from. Special education is a big increase, and, um, and you all know that we have had um, more severe student, uh, severe is not the right word, more intense, um, intense services for some of our students for special education. Um, this is an area where you're going to see an increase in salaries because of the amount of people that we actually have working in special ed, because be, being mindful this not only takes um, into consideration the salaries of teachers in special education, also the IAs, also special ed transportation, also the aides on the buses. So there's a lot that goes into this. Um, also home hospital, if we have any student that gets home hospital. This is where you find your therapists. So you find school psychologists, speech pathologists, all of those therapists. and. Um, also the legal services and uh, tuition for private placement is here as well. And last but not least, consortium services. So that's your occupational therapists and your physical therapists, they're all in this category. So we have seen an increase in services. Also, this includes four new teaching positions plus the sign language interpreter and um, an increase in nursing contracts because we do have some students that are more intense and need a nurse, and legal fees as well. 
So that's all in special education. Question? Yes. Um, nursing contracts, is this for RNs or? Most of the time it is for an RN. Um, it really does depend on the child's in, um, individual educational plan. Some uh, IEPs call for a nurse, some will call for an LPN, some might call for um, an aide, like a CNA. Um, but for the most part, this increase is due to a, an RN. Yes. The reason I ask is because of the shortage. Yes, yes. And it, it, it's, yeah, it's difficult to find, but we've been, knock on wood, we've been pretty lucky lately. So that's a good thing. Um, and again, I talked to you a little bit about the more, th we have more three-year-olds that are going to need another classroom. We have more students with intense services. So we're going to be opening up another self-contained classroom. Um, and then we also have some more service. We need one at St. Michael's um, to definitely to help. And some help with testing would, would be helpful too. Um, pupil services. So pupil personnel services is, um, it is, is all encompassing of mental health, student services, school resource officers, um, software for alternative learning, night school, software for college searches. So when students are in high school and we get them on to do um, Naviance, to, to do college searches and to get their resumes and do all their applications. Um, it's also for tuition public placement and counselor um, conference. This category has an increase. It would be a lot larger. As a matter of fact, it would be almost a half a million dollars more if we didn't have the Project AWARE grant. So we are very fortunate that we have three staff members paid for out of Project AWARE and five social workers out of um, grants. If we didn't, we'd have them in this area, just so that you know. How long are the grants going to last? Um, the Project AWARE grant is going to be for another three years. Am I right? Three? Three more years after this. Um, and then the others are year to year. Um, we did have um, three social workers in a grant that ended this past year, but then we got another grant. So we're always looking, always looking, always trying to find ways. Um, but here is the difference in that cost. The other thing that you're going to see is a shift of software costs from other charges. And let me explain that to you. Um, we had all of our coaches um, getting their training um, in this category. Am I right, Sarah? And we moved it to other charges? Or was it, am I backwards? Uh, no, it's just the, the software really belongs in contracted services. Oh, it was the software for alternative. Yeah. That's yeah. it. And for whatever reason, we had it in, in the wrong cost object. We just moved it up where it is in every other category that has software costs. Right, so it was for like alternative ed or night school, and so we moved it into this. So you're going to see a little bit of an increase because we moved it into the right category. Just wanted you to know that um, when you take a look at the details, um, it's there. Um, transportation is um, an increase. You'll see a larger increase in the land and buildings, but please note that transportation is not only salaries, but this is also the salaries for um, those that drive for special education purposes. So if it's not a bus, it could be a van that's driving um, special education. Um, it also is for um, in-house repairs. I can tell you we actually saved in supplies and materials because we have such brilliant people that work in the school system that bought fuel when it was a lower cost in advance. So that's going to save us a little bit of money there. Goodness that we're not buying it now because it is rather expensive. Um, but as you can see in the next slide, it really is for salary increases, special education transportation increases, and we, are, we do have four new buses. And please remember that the four buses that we buy, they're 100, approximately 125000 a piece, but we do it in a five-year lease least to own, correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, and it's $25,000 a year, but those are the four new buses that are in there. Plus, we have um, buses we're still paying. So um, we're on schedule, though, which is good. So we're on schedule with our buses. Um, <coughs> I wish we could have used uh, that one time when we were shut down as a, a waiver, but we tried. They wouldn't, they wouldn't entertain the thought. So... 
Um, I just think if it's a 15 year, they could have given us a year as a waiver, but we tried. Operation of plant. Operation of plant includes a lot of things, and I, and I think it's important to, to revisit that. It includes all our custodians, our special project crews, pest control, trash removal, snow removal, lawn mowing. It also re includes the repairs of equipment and all the maintenance agreements of photocopiers in all of our buildings, uh, facility planning, custodial supplies, mulching, all our utility bills are in here uh, for our buildings and uniforms. So this is a pretty comprehensive category, which is why it's so many pages in your budget book. Um, just so you can see where some of the increases are, um, it was interesting because we went down, um, we were so excited because we, went, we found a new contractor for trash removal, so we saved $15,000. But then Easton Elementary School got built and we raised lawn mowing $15,000. So they offset sometimes. Um, we were down in mulch, but now we're back up because of the larger playground at East Elementary. Well, nobody's complaining because it's good. And plus, we just we needed more with that. Um, custodial supplies. And we did add in some facility plan consulting funds to help us with our feasibility studies and our and our. Um, educational facility master plan. So that was added in as well. Um, and again, we did save some, we saved uh, actually about $18,000 in this category because we bought last year, if you remember correctly, we bought the, the new custodial equipment and that came in. So we're not asking for any new custodial equipment. So that's good. Maintenance of plant is a category that includes um, the salaries of supervisory personnel, repairs to buildings and grounds, um, tires. Um, this is actually where the fuel costs of all the trucks that our maintenance people use to go around the county. Um, it also includes painting in the summer at the schools. A lot of times we paint our stairwells and bathrooms in the summer. It includes any furniture replacements. So if you get a school that's older, like Easton High, you know, chairs break and you have to replace them from time to time. So all of that's included in maintenance of plants. So when it says maintenance of plant, it's really maintenance of our buildings, um, if you will, minus custodians are in this category. Um, that's a great picture of those guys. Um, so this actually is only up um, slightly and it's really more for salary increases and um, when it talks about facility repairs, it's really um, looking into some of the facility repairs that our own people can't do. For an example, and I've told you guys this before, we have one plumber, we have one electrician, you know, we have two HVAC. Those, they do all of our schools, all of our buildings, everything. If they run into something that they cannot service or they can't get it taken care of and we might have to outsource, that comes into this category. And sometimes that happens. Um, same thing with um, transportation. We have two mechanics that take care of all of our buses and our cars and our vans and our trucks, but sometimes they might have to outsource. So that's where that comes, just so that you know. Um, another big category is fixed charges. And in fixed charges, this includes um, Social Security, retirement, pension, health insurance, unemployment costs, workman's compensation. It also includes tuition reimbursement for our staff, for our staff to further their education. And it also includes our OPEB trust. So you'll see all of those listed. The biggest change in fixed charges is health insurance increase of 5%. And there's also some smaller increases in social security, pension, and retirement. And that um, has to do with, obviously, when you increase your salaries, you're increasing in these areas. Um, and just to give you an idea, Social Security increases is about 130,000. Uh, pension increases is about 30,000. But I think it's, it's, you know, once you increase salaries, you've got, there's a lot of other things that go along with it. And um, this is a summary by category this summary shows each of the categories, and when you look at the categories, 
you can pretty much see what I emphasized tonight. And that was really looking and where it goes throughout is instructional. Um, any kind of salaries is, is in almost every category. So that is a salary increase placeholder of 2.75 for certified, 3.25 for support. It also, you can see fixed charges is a larger number for the 5% health insurance increase. And special education is an increase um, because of the um, intensity of students that we have and the additional positions. And mid-level is an increase because we did move three teachers from administrative interns into that um, assistant principal position. So it's pretty notable where those are. The rest of them, I mean, we're really trying to be conservative here. We know we've received a lot of grants. Thank goodness we did, or this budget would be larger. Um, but it is a 3.8 million increase, which is about 6%. And if you look at this by object, this actually really kind of lays it out. There's your salary and wages. There's your other charges, which is your fixed charges. And contracted services is more of your nursing, legal fees, some of the things that you need to, uh, environmental field trips, those kinds of things all fall into that. Um, and then um, I also wanted to share with you what we've talked about before. We actually shared this with the county council, our capital projects. Um, we shared, we were very grateful to them for Easton Elementary School. That's just been an amazing project. Um, but last year they did approve the Easton High School roof replacement and the track replacement and the Easton High School parking lot. So last year we asked for 3.8 million. Actually, we asked for a little bit more. That's what we got. This year, we're only asking for about 930,000, um, but there's specific projects. So that is to do the St. Michael's parking lot. Remember, we were supposed to do that last year, but Easton High ended up costing us more. Uh, White Marsh is requesting a sunshade for outdoor classroom playground, a security fence along that road. Um, what's it called? Is it called Lover's Lane? Yeah. Lover's Lane, that um, uh, fence along there. Um, and a pole building for us to actually have controlled temperature storage and um, paving this bus lot out here. And a real stretch of a request is if we could take back here where all the buses are and just have the road go around and have an en exit over here so the buses come in one side and go out the other, it would be a lot safer. I'm just saying, because we have a lot of employees up here and there's a lot of people coming and going. Um, Three of us, well, the four of us always play chicken in the morning because <laughs> we all get to work around 6, 6.30 and the buses are coming out and we're going in. And um, so that's a long stretch, but that's a request. Yes. High school um, roof, that's in last year's budget. That's already been taken care of. So Correct. They're still year. working on it, but it is in this year's budget. Yep. Mm-hmm. So as you can see, I always like to say there's a big savings. There's a $2.9 million savings here. <laughs> so, but it is a savings and a request, um, 930,000. So we will ask for that capital request. Um, just to note, these grant positions are still in the budget. Um, our SROs, uh, some of those SROs are obviously in our local, but most of them are paid through with the county council, with the sheriff's department too. So we, and we do grants as well. Um, health department grant, we have a health, we, ha we have a second infant and toddler teacher um, through the health department, which we're very blessed to have. Talbot Family Network grant pays for our dropout reengagement specialist. That new Maryland Aware 2 grant for mental health and awareness, it's 300,000 each year for five years, we're in year two. And the ESSER grant positions, including contracted tutors. So we have quite a few positions continuing to be paid for through grants. Um, and we're, you know, we're in good standing right there. We also have four social workers being paid for through grants as well. Um, here's a summary of overall major increases. Um, I think I tried to just do one slide so you could kind of see like what are the major increases that add up to about 3.8 million difference. And I think putting it in this perspective, it kind of helps you kind of wrap your head around it a little bit. Um, 
but again, it's the placeholder. There are some new positions for special education, sign language interpreter, CNA instructor, and special education. Um, fixed charges, moving the three administrative interns to uh, assistant principal. This is gonna be really important, especially with Kerwin coming down and a lot of the regulations. Reinstating those environmental field trips, uh, four new buses, special education nursing services and more transportation increases in special education and technology upgrades. And again, technology would be more if we didn't have the grants too. Actually, we used ESSER grant to replace our servers. That saved us about $300,000, just so you know. Um, so Mr. Wilson is really good at always looking around to see if he can find ways to get grants to help for uh, some of the technology upgrades. And um, I always appreciate that. Um, another slide here is projected revenues, and I hate to tell you, but it's stay tuned. Um, we really haven't received uh, or any confirmed actual funding of what our state and federal allocations will be, and we are also still waiting on what the maintenance of effort formula is going to be. Um, we're hoping that we'll have this in January, so when we go to our second reader, we can actually put up projected revenues, put up what you've come up with the budget and take a look at where the differences are. Um, the other thing that I wanna do in January is I wanna bring to you the turf field information. Actually, I'm gonna probably send that to you before the break so you can have some time to look over it. I have a whole file of um, information for you to take a look at. So I will share that with you probably before the break so that you have some time to take a look at that before our next meeting. And I think another reminder, another cute kid, um, budget hearing January 19th at 5.30. So we'll have our budget hearing. Um, we will have people sign up to speak or write in whatever they wanna do. As soon as the budget hearing concludes, you as a board will have a work session with the budget um, to take a look at whatever you wanna look at, ask more questions. Um, if you have questions along the way, if you could send them to me in advance, that way we can make it quicker. In other words, I can get answers back to you quicker. Um, if you have ideas, it's a great time to discuss it then as well. And then we'll also have time in tonight's meeting uh, for this budget if you want to talk about some things tonight in, in the open session of um, the meeting as well. Um, this is uh, the proposed budget with a lot of input. It is conservative, I am going to tell you that. Um, but at the same time, I think it's reasonable. Yes? Uh, inflation, how are we managing that since it's pretty high this year? Yeah, I think, um, to be honest with you, because of the last couple years being the way they are, I think we, we bought some things in advance a little bit because you know, with shutting down and doing a hybrid, I think with the fuel costs, we were very smart to buy fuel in advance before these numbers came up. Um, but we're gonna have to keep an eye on it. We really are, um, especially for an example, contracted services. I mean, you never know when nurses um, and their services are needed is gonna increase, you know, so we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. Um, and you never know, I know I looked at uh, the cost of living and it's pretty high right now. Um, it usually is somewhere between a two and a three and it's more like a eight. Um, so yeah, it's pretty high. It's kind of scary actually. But I also know um, reading as much as I read our state's in a good sh place right now. There's, there's a surplus in the state, there's a surplus in the counties. So there's some surplus funding out there available. So um, I think asking for a 6% increase is not asking for too much. That's just my opinion. No, I think it fits in with what's happening nationally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a list of questions. Should I wait and ask you? No, you later? can go ahead. Yeah, okay. we got a lot of it's just cost stuff to come back to us next time. Sure. Um, I'll start with those. Those are easy. Could we get a, a number for how much it would cost per 1% added to um, staff, either COLA or STEP? Okay, so an additional, so instead of 2.75, 3.75? Yeah, however okay. much 1% additional would okay. be just to have that in our pocket. Um, 
also, I'd be interested in the cost um, to add in after school busing back. It, it, okay, I did take that out, so we could add that back in. Just, I mean, to just we never had anybody use it. Yeah, if we could figure out a way to make that program really work, I think it would be very beneficial, but I know we've struggled, so. Okay. Um, uh, question, in the custodial costs, mm -hmm. um, are, uh, is a vacuum for each custodian or custodians in there? I know there were some questions about that a few years ago. We bought all that equipment last year, so they should have everything they need. Okay, so they yeah. do have vacuums mm -hmm. now that mm -hmm. are not there and they're bringing from home? No, they shouldn't be bringing anything from home. Okay, excellent. We don't even allow that, so. Um, the facility plan consulting, is that a firm or are we bringing somebody in? Who? No, that's if, if um, Kevin, I, what he realized was after doing Easton Elementary School and then starting the, the chapel feasibility study, um, when he was doing East Elementary School, it was really nice having, um, you know, an expert be able to consult with somebody. And I think if he's going to do another project, whether it's Easton or Chapel or not, it would be good to have some fun funding available to have some consulting. Um, and it's not like one consultant. It's like if you want to consult with somebody on engineering or you want to consult with somebody on a specific uh, surveying. Um, for an example, a perfect example. Um, we're sitting here, we're looking at all these new housing developments possibly going up. We might need a consultant to look at redistricting. Those are the kinds of things that Mr. Schaefer encounters, and he's very good at what he does, but sometimes it's always good to have some expert advice, right? So I think that's where that came from, was okay. building that in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, the $65,000 for the pole building, mm -hmm. that figure seems particularly low in this climate. I was curious when that estimate was he got that last year i can have him take a look at it again okay because if that does get funded i just want to make sure it's an adequate okay. amount to do what we need to do i think michael brought that up last year and i said something to him about it but i'll have him look again i mean at knowing the prices of building materials are kind of through the roof that that if does can get them for the size of it would need to be to, to make sense which i don't know right. it just doesn't but okay. i don't i'm not a builder so um my last question is more kind of amorphous um when i'm looking at our numbers and our special ed population is at 11%, and we're continuing to increase staffing around that, which makes sense from a lot of legal reasons and whatnot. Um, and then I compare it to our population in GT, which is at 9%. Mm -hmm. um, and our GT population only takes into account grades 3 to, through 7. And so to me, that's a, a more concentrated population of kids. Or and that 9% is that population. Okay. It's not all. But still, yeah. those numbers are pretty comparable to me. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had a great presentation from Dr. Sutton, you know, about our great GT program and what we're doing mm -hmm. with it and how it's expanding. I'd be interested to know um, how we could expand that program, how we could fund to expand that program to meet those kids' needs as well, y you know, paying, knowing that there are a very specific segment in the same way in my head that special ed is a very specific segment and they have special you know specific needs i think meeting their needs and challenging them could help the greater population and, and help our school system as a whole to help our high achievers achieve even more okay um so i'm not sure exactly how you do that um but just maybe some sort of attention to that program or, or additional funding for resources or staffing or they do a great job with what they have i wonder if we could do even greater that kind of folded into the fact that we encourage almost any child to take the AP classes? Um, that, that could be part of it, but not really. I mean, kind of. we, we, we don't have any obstacles for kids to take up our level courses, and we do that on purpose because we really want to encourage students to explore and, and work to their fullest potential. Um, but I think what you're talking about is a little more specific of direct services. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah just making okay. sure. I know, I mean, they're doing the residency program this year, which, which is working, and they've, but they've changed their model of service mm -hmm. throughout the past three years, and mm -hmm. is there a better way? Could, do we need more staff to you know, achieve more? To, can we push them, these children, a little harder? Or, you know, I mean, I, I don't have the answer. I'm just wondering if funding okay. is, is part of it. Um, I was just thinking, yeah, if you did that in normal grades, then you would get into a, a middle high where you do have the AP classes the whole stays up oh it does definitely oh definitely and we do look we do take a look at that we take a look at their scheduling 
because um, we have students that are in the program and they get to the high school and they're not signing up for, especially if we're seeing that they have that potential in math and they're not pushing themselves in math, then that conversation is had um, because we are um, keeping an eye on that because um, it's important. Um, it's also, we also do a correlation with the students that we've identified in GT for certain content areas and then look at their state assessments or their PSATs or their SATs to make sure that they are working to their full potential. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of high achievers in this district. Maybe Absolutely. Making sure that we're meeting, meeting their needs early on and encouraging them early on and, and helping them to grow into even higher achievers is, is great. Mm -hmm. um, my last question and then I, I'm done. Um, we've talked a lot about Kerwin and about how there's a percentage required of salary increase. Um, is it, there's a base salary requirement at some point, correct? Yeah, so the first part of Kerwin is a 10% increase from 2019 to 2024. The second requirement of Kerwin legislation blueprint, House Bill 1300, whatever we all wanna call it, is um, to have your starting salary at 60,000 by 2026. So that's the, the next uh, piece of it. Um, with what we have in this budget, and Sarah, you might be able to help me with this. I think our current starting salary is about 48, three? 43. Yeah, so our goal is to try to get, you know, above that, least up to like a 50,000, you know what I mean? So that gives us three or four more years to get to the other. Um, but it is something we have to take a look at, definitely. Mm -hmm. For a lot at you, thank you for being here. No, it's all good, good. Anybody else have a question? You know, I'm just thinking the county council gets what, $15,440 per year. Um, I'm just thinking numbers, when they look at numbers, they that might seem such a jump that we have, that our goal is to start our teachers, certified teachers at 60,000, which makes sense, but it may not make sense to them. That's a dinner meeting conversation. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. And we'll have that dinner meeting with the board, um, the county council on January 4th at 5.30. And I think that's definitely a conversation that we need to have. Yep. But if it's a part of this requirement. Right, but if we can show them like backward mapping, like if you need to be at 60,000 by 2026, backward mapping to 23, what does that look like? You know, they're always wanting to know like what was gonna be in your budget. Okay, well here's backward mapping and let's just plan on 5% health insurance increase over the next five years. So here's what you can plan on. Um, you know, those are some givens. Right, and I think if you can share with your county council what are some givens, um, I think it, you know, it may not be 3.8 million more, but it's a given that we're gonna definitely need 2.5 million more based just on those two, two factors, you know, so. But looking long term, you know, we have the, the study from the town of East and the planning commission on the number of new housing units and it, that tells me that the tax base for the county is going to be growing substantially over the next Absolutely. few years. So it's not you know, unreasonable mm -hmm. for us to be able to get to the 60,000 Absolutely. time frame without causing too much pain and consternation, I would imagine. And that's a good point. While you're backward mapping what your cost might be, you're also forward thinking what your projected revenues might be with those projected projects and, and housing developments. That study, Easton Elementary School is already too small. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And we'll have to look at redistricting. Because the numbers that they're putting in off of Oxford Road, that staggered me. I didn't realize that that place, that was gonna be as large as it is. I know. It said 620 units. Yeah, and, and we haven't even really wrapped our head around the whole um, trap um, development yet. Right. But um, there's quite a few, and, and, and thank you, Mary, for bringing up that one development we'll look into. But you're absolutely right. I think 
Michael, you make a good point. You can backward map to really see what you're going to need, but you can also look projections with revenues that might be coming in and not be so overwhelmed with what the needs might right. be. Right. I think the other thing when we look at those housing units is these are not senior um, housing. This is regular families, young children, jobs, and I think that's the, that different. And some are apartments and townhomes. So, you know, different hopefully hopefully some will be for our teachers. That would be good. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, was, it was 439 units off of Oxford yeah. Road. Okay. There you go. 109 detached, 138 townhomes, 192 apartments. Yeah, so. All right. Well, um, I want to thank everyone for their patience with this budget. It's been really interesting not knowing a little bit about the revenue and some of the blueprint requirements. Um, but I think um, overall, everyone's done a nice job submitting what they need. Um, so what we'll do is um, I will get these questions back to you, all of you, the answers. In the meantime, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to send them to me and I can get those answers out to everybody because um, I think it's always good for everyone to have everything so that when we come to the next meeting and we have a budget hearing and we start doing a work group and a work session, we can bring up some of the things that you want to bring up. It's a good place. It's always a good to have a starting place, right? Okay. Um, could we meet at five after? Sure. That gives about 10 minutes for folks. Let me, I'll switch this over. Thank <laughs> you.